Well, hey, everybody. It is podcast number seven, and uh, we've headed to northern Wisconsin. We're way up in Wisconsin, aren't we, Pete? Into way, the, way north. Into Wisconsin. the garage of? This is Pete Mena right here. Pete Mena. He's raising our fishing IQ, so let's do this. <laughs> oh, IQ is way up. Way up. This isn't another fishing show. This is another fishing show. I got to tell you guys, um, outside, it's really, really nice. <laughs> it, it is. It's like the first nice day that we've had this spring. This, and I put those in quotation marks, yes. spring. It's, it's, it's nice outside, but we're in the garage, and this, this isn't just any garage, by the way. This is Maina's garage, and if you see behind us, we have the most amazing collection of musky lures that you'll ever see in your life. Am I? I mean, are you not impressed, Pete Wagner? It's incredible. As I was setting up the gear, I was getting very nervous about tipping backwards into that and probably ending up with in an emergency room. Yeah, like it, you'd have with, to get a. You do, have you? Is your? Uh, do you have a tetanus shot? All your tetanus? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, it's right. a good idea. Right. It's a great. It's a it's torture wall um, for multiple reasons. Right. A torture wall. Yeah. Torture wall. Not oh, come on. <laughs> but it is a real nice day outside. Uh, unfortunately, we're freezing to death because of the concrete in here. They wanted to do this where I have about 5 to 10% of my musky lures in the background. So we're in here freezing on this only beautiful day of spring. It's really getting old. Like, I've been trying to get out on the water. I got out on the Mississippi, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, 50 degrees felt like 70 degrees. And then everything oh, yeah. fell back into a big snowy mess. And uh, as I was heading north up here, you're up in northern Wisconsin, I guess, central Wisconsin, I guess we call it, right? No, northern. Northern Wisconsin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the snow kept getting heavier as I was heading north, and I got more <laughs> depressed. So um, I think the entire fishing world is getting sick of this scene. So we thought, what better way to kill an afternoon as to come up here <laughs> and annoy the hell out of Pete in his garage and uh, make him talk about fishing. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I tell you one thing. We should interview one of these chickens. We have a uh, main of chickens in the garage. <laughs> They're yes. looking tasty. Yeah, so, what, so yeah, it, I, you might be able to see on the video podcast, we, we, Mana's chickens are walking around his garage. In fact, uh, Pete Wagner, grab one of those chickens right that, now. Yeah, that one. Will, can, he, he'll, yeah. Go ahead and yeah, just, just grab, grab him. him. He's, that's there a friendly go. one. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, and nice. what is her name? You know what? Uh, we should have Esther here. I forget. But this is one of the friendlier ones. And as I think I told you, this one likes to jump in the truck. When I come home from a long trip, this particular chicken, if you leave the... No, go ahead and talk, chicken. That a girl. That's nice. I knew you would, and they're trained. <laughs> That's they fantastic, is, man. Yeah, but this one jumps in my truck. Okay. Right? I've got likes lots to drive. Of nice oh, yeah, likes to drive. Passenger, too. Either way, but... It's a very friendly ch see. It's amazing. This might be. I think this is. Well, the, oh, yeah, oh, oh there we go. <laughs> I, I think that's the first chicken. I I think it's the first chicken I've ever held in my life, actually. <laughs> really? I mean, live and you're chicken. A, and you're a grocer. Yeah. A lot. You've held many dead. <laughs> chickens, I've held many a dead chicken, but I've never held a live chicken. So we already have a day of first. This is we're getting off to a good start, to say the least. So. <laughs> and so those chickens are for um for eggs. Yeah, those they are egg laying eggs. chickens. Yes. You get you get your uh your scrambled eggs from those chickens whatever over easy eggs in yeah. the morning that's the famous the there. famous mena omelet the uh the musky egg omelets is that what you serve up here well uh no there's no muskies in them I, but yeah, yeah, that's blasphemous what you just <laughs> yeah. said there. yeah careful <laughs> careful now <laughs> well i am sitting in a booby trap chair so at some point today <laughs> My chair is going to give out, so um, I would just like to yeah. warn everybody when that happens, it was actually kind of planned for comedy reasons. So. Yeah, right. yeah, for sure. So well, to get things underway, I guess um, most people are familiar with Pete Mayna. I know me and Greg are. Greg used to work with Pete extensively, and I was just a fan of Pete growing up and uh, a fan of fishing in general. Um, so th I guess to start out where uh, you came from, Pete, because you had told me last time we met that you originally came from Chicago as a young boy. And your dad, who lives just down the road here, kind of um, brought you into Wisconsin. And where, uh, where did his plan come from to get you out of the city and move you to the woods? Because that's kind of a bold move, looking back on it. Well, it was really a bold move. And uh, I believe that he came home from a union meeting upset. And he was, <laughs> is the way the story goes, and he loved it up north. And he literally came home from that meeting and told my mom that we're going to buy a resort 
in northern Wisconsin. And had you been taking fishing trips with your dad at that point? Like, oh, no. I was six months old. Oh, so this is like you don't hardly even remember the city, essentially. No. No. I Every time I go back, I say, thank, thank God. you, God. <laughs> thank you, Tex and Pat. <laughs> That's incredible. So, But you had an older brother at that point, but you didn't have a younger brother. I did not because he was younger and right. I was only six months so old. So he just got fed up, moved to the Northwoods, bought yeah, a resort, sir. and yeah. the rest is history. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We had the resort for 11 years. I Were you like in downtown Chicago? Like Texas in like da- downtown Chicago? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's yeah. hard. Because I've, I've worked with Tex quite a bit, you know. Yes, you sure. have. And I can't imagine Tex ever living in the city. <laughs> You well, know? he couldn't anymore either. I mean, uh, he shed yeah. all of his city values. I'm sure he's a true Northwoods man. <laughs> I just man. see Tex like just sprouting from the Northwoods. I can't imagine him ever like that's where his he, his origin was. He from. grew up from in, the in Chicago. That's amazing yeah. to me. Oh, Good yeah. for him. I mean, it, it is in your DNA. Like you can't figure out why. You know, fishing drives you to do crazy things. And, um, you know, some people just have it in their DNA. They don't realize it, maybe not the first part of your life, but at some point in your life, something triggers you that tells you, I just need to be on the water because that's where I'm going to be happy. So good for Tex because he got it figured out, you know? Yeah, he did. And then that's what happened to me. Yeah, Apparently, right. you know, I was wired the same way. We're at a fishing resort. That's the only reason anyone ever came to resort back and, then. And you fish. started guiding at the age of 11, the ripe old age of 11? Yes. Yeah, I did. I was addicted immediately. But, uh, yeah, somebody canceled last minute a guide. And, you know, Tex said, this boy of mine, he likes to fish, and he's got a real strong back. Now, in those days, <laughs> they had the, that old-fashioned thing called oars. Right. We you had no you, trolling mode. No, you just had to move your guests around by cranking the oars all yeah. the way, huh? Yeah, and Tex said, this boy can roll, and he knows the lake, so... Off we went. By the way, I, you may or may not know this, but in those or days, we lovingly called those the struggle sticks. <laughs> yes, I've heard yeah. this. I've yeah, well, Greg this. has. Yes. I, know, I didn't know that. I know. I did not. I wasn't aware of that, but it makes perfect sense. Isn't that amazing, though? Can you imagine trolling with oars? So did you have a motor to get you to a weed bed, and then after that you'd pull out the oars? Like you had a smoky old Oh, motor? yeah. Okay. We did have, uh, on average, a whopper of a nine horse right. or something like that. Smoking yeah. like crazy. But you, you know? would oh, troll yeah. with oars, though, right? Like you would paddle with, like, it, it, that was a thing up here in Wisconsin. Well, like, yeah, not a whole lot of trolling. We did do it, but it was mainly boat positioning. Okay, right? you know, okay. just keeping guys on where they needed to be fishing. But so, didn't you have any issues with um, maybe a disrespect as an eleven-year-old guy? <laughs> like, you know, are are you trying to tell people, hey, we're going to take you to this hole? I needed a cast here, or were the people you were taking out familiar with the the lake already, or you were just the ore guy, or were you literally in charge of putting them on fish? No, you were the ore guy. Now, in that particular case i uh well i gotta tell you i succeeded greatly we got a 20 pound muskie that day <laughs> your which first in, day out which in those days yeah yeah it was a big deal and it was actually just luck i mean it was one of those deals really quick i gotta tell the story the guy got a backlash how we got this 20 pound muskie which was a big celebration when we got back to the resort and of course a young man's ego you know, at 11, right? right? The biggest right. muskie of the day. You're taking full credit. I got you? a jackknife for a tip. Right. I, I was living large. You were sold. <laughs> yeah. But it but it was literally, I'm sitting there, and I, I got to be honest, I don't remember the guy's name or anything, but I was a little, little uh, tough on the struggle sticks, not real happy with the guy because he's pulling on the end. As a guide, then, you couldn't get the backlash out for him because you're rolling, you right. know, to keep the, and the, and the baits bobbing out there. But anyway, the muskie had to be looking at the bait bobbing in the waves. Wow. Because the guy finally gets the backlash out. And I'm like, oh, thank God. I can move again. And the instant he moved the lure, boof. Wow. Yeah. And that's how the first fish came into the boat on your first time out? Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. So you guys, would be, they would be casting, but you would keep like a sucker in the water? Not that time of year. That was just, I was rolling him around casting. And it, his lure was just sitting in the water that Yeah. Yeah, it was a floating lure. And now that's the other interesting thing. In those days, your job as a guide in the fall was to rig up casting suckers. Nobody cared about catch and release back then, so it was literally a, a swallow hook 
and there was a pretty intricate way of tying up these suckers so you'd literally throw them out and use them as a jerk bait. Wow. And you always did. did that in the fall. That's how you a started live your day. Sucker, huh? No, dead. You'd whop it over the head but and you just tie make it, it alive on by knocking. And even like way back in the old days, they used to just shoot them at the boat, right? Wasn't that just a thing? Yeah, I miss that. Apparently that <laughs> became illegal <laughs> literally the year I was born. Uh, that became illegal. But, yeah, I heard lots of stories in my early guiding years, guiding old-timers that had fished with, with guides. And, yeah, there's a lot of really funny stories, actually, oh, about can you uh, imagine? Like shooting. You, yeah. you mix guns with the chaos of a muskie flopping on the side of your boat? I mean, that's a recipe for disaster, right? <laughs> Sometimes it didn't go well. No, and then, and then you shoot a muskie, and then you're just bringing it to the bar, I guess, right? I mean, what else are you doing with it? You know, a oh, you got to bring it to the bar, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you throw them right up on the bar. and <laughs> If it's big enough, you drag it all over Hayward. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then, then the you know. legend grows right. from there. Yeah. As the fish. Yeah. Yeah. Shrinks, right? Yeah, yeah. About six hours later, you crawl home. There's nothing left. I think that's how. <laughs> yeah. So nice. then, so you just spent your whole uh, life up here fishing, and that um, evolved into you somehow turning this into a profession. Well, before we get into that, it, it, like you were very young. I mean, you were learning about muskies and how to, you know, guy. I mean, it wasn't like you were just. Later on, maybe when you were eleven, you were just rowing people. But you got yeah. very young age. You were you were guiding people. I mean, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like you you know you you were figuring these guys out, these muskies out. I mean, right? Well, yeah, and I should point out that I wasn't really a musky nut till probably nineteen. It's uh, hard to be a musky nut when you're a little kid. I mean, just the gear is sort of a hard thing to deal with when you're. Well, eating. that's that's true too. But yeah. we, you know, we fished everything. We probably had more call for walleye, panfish, bass, that kind of thing. And I did a little bit of everything. Right. So my right. first job ended up being musky just by chance. And so you were a multi-species guide. Yes. When did you become more of a a musky guide or a musky like? Okay, this is the guy to go to for muskies. That that started eh, 17, 18 already. I was doing quite well overall. And then personally, for whatever reason, something just kicked in around 19 where I just decided, and I had already at that age built up a, a business to where I could do it. I was, I was that busy guiding where I could be selective, and I, I decided I just want to fish these muskies now. Mm -hmm. And then I went through a, a stage of that, essentially, once the muskie season opened, that was all I guided for. And were, were muskies, would you say that was a bigger deal back then or a bigger deal now? Because it's always been part of the culture of the Hayward area. Yes. So that was a big destination thing for people, or still people were targeting eyes and panfish, and they just wanted to come up with their families to catch fish. But yeah, I would say it, it, it hasn't really changed. Right. Uh, it's it was then, and it it still is. There's still a lot of people who come here to fish everything, but uh, yeah, I you know I at least musky is the main hyped target right anyway and, and yeah. just the way the fish are treated now and the way that the resource is sort of treated i guess has changed a lot in that time frame but the actual oh, tremendously the actual yeah. passion for fishing uh muskies up here has always been kind of status quo huh yeah hmm. yeah what what how old were you i i remember this story because i think it's such a, a great story and i think any fisherman could can benefit from this not just musky fishermen but you told me a story this is like years ago uh, we were coming back from a shoot or something, and you said that you, when you were younger, you remember um, you would come off the water. You had just been guiding or something, and you came off the water, and it's late. It's like, I, I don't know, it might have been the evening or something, and you saw animals moving around. You saw, like, deer oh. running, and you're like, uh-oh, I got to get back on the water. Like, there was something where... Just the fact that you saw everything, all all the critters moving around, that you're like, oh, it's on back at, on the water. Like you, you it was were a trigger. And, huh? and, and the big thing about muskies is, and I'm seeing it in, in bass fishing too, like shooting these major league fishing events where you'll have these, and most bass fishermen don't realize it because they don't know how the other bass fishermen are doing throughout the day. But these major league fishing tournaments, everybody knows how well everybody's doing. And you see these peak times when all of a sudden, just for no apparent reason, you'll have a flurry. You know, it's bloop, everybody starts catching fish. I like that. Bloop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and mus musky like. yeah. guys have known known this for years and years and years. Right. And so 
I think it's I just love that story where you're I'm kind of I'm messing the story up but you were coming back you were like done for the day or something because it's it was it was sucking and then so you you put the boat on the trail you started heading home and then you saw see you saw activity you saw like deer run or something and you're like I got to get back out oh. that boat around huh yeah it, there's absolutely no doubt and that the one particular story I told you was after an extremely long day but I I did that actually a lot whereby it for that period of years, a 16-hour day was about average, and I was totally addicted. I had literally no life otherwise, frankly, which I enjoyed. But uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> we, right. Wagner we, and I have had this kinda, conversation we kinda on, the last covered podcast. That on the last podcast. Like, if you want to be a great fisherman, you probably shouldn't have a family or friends. Oh, there's no, there's no time <laughs> for any of, of that. No. no. I mean, if you no. really want to be a great fisherman. But, you know, I've heard uh, cat fishermen talk about the same thing. I mean, they look if they see deer in the field when they're heading out catfish, and they see it as a good thing. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, yeah, back to that. The, in this particular case, yeah, I, you know, I already had like 16 hours in, but that was, that was just the way I was and and you know especially the longer the dead period is uh, the more important it is but there is a definite definite correlation between you know what fish and animals are reacting to barometric pressure changes and moon all the things that we've talked about over the years with these windows but the windows are even more intense I think with a top-of-the-line predator but uh, in this particular case I made it about halfway home and all of a sudden everything's moving Deer, raccoons, you name it. If it's out at night, it was running across the road. Right. And I knew it. It's time. I don't. Doesn't matter how tired you are. It. You know. You get back on the water. You're gonna catch a fish. It's gonna be good. And so, what percentage of fishing do you do at night? Do you think? Uh, these days, not as much because it's frankly hard for filming. Uh, at the end of my guiding, I probably. I'd say 60, 70% was after dark Jeez. for a lot of reasons. I didn't get followed around. I was, I was known pretty well on, so, you know, this hair. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're easy I, to spot. You know, yes. yes. I didn't wear the Love pink it. hat back yeah. then, but the hair and... and S- subtlety uh, has never been a trait I would describe Pete Mano with. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, after dark and uh, quite a bit. And it's, it, it's not the magic elixir. I've been... I've caught them literally every hour uh, after dark, you can right. imagine. But, I, you know, you can get your butt kicked at 2 in the morning or sure. 1 in the morning. But in those hot summer days, I'm sure that's another excuse to be out there at night. It's just tolerable, I'm sure, on a late August day to be out there in the evening. Yeah, it's nicer, you know, in a lot of ways. You always have to endure – well, not always. Certain times of year it's not as bad. But you usually have to endure about a 45-minute mosquito barrage. By, I, by the way, I don't know if you guys have ever gotten into this, but why do mosquitoes – decide to march out on the middle of the lake yeah right at dark it's and, maddening and then retreat and then shut down at some point yeah i know this yeah is that's weird. that's one of life's great mysteries it's mad- it really is we go to the boundary waters every year and as soon as you hear that hum in the top of the trees it's like get in your tent and wait yeah. out because <laughs> it, it is a nightmare and if you're in a canoe still coming back there's nothing you can do you just get covered in them you know it really is just a mess a nightmare of mosquito hell, but back on the <laughs> fish activity deal, the other so, Mena has got a uh, goldfish pond, uh, yes, back behind his house here. And one thing that's really really interesting, and and, and I think this makes complete sense. It goes along with seeing critters moving and and kind of uh, keen you in on okay maybe I should be back on the water. Tell me about the goldfish in your pond and what they tell you about fish activity. Well, I- I- exactly that. I mean, you, uh, and it usually associates with something that makes sense, moonrise, moonset, front coming in, that kind of thing, but they get more active. I mean, you, you can see, you look out the window, and everybody's laying on the bottom, and they're not moving, and they got their little fins up over their eyes, and you could tell they're just not happy. Right. They're not moving. So, and, and all of a sudden, now you got to remember, they these fish make a living by pellets right i mean uh, you know they so have nothing to lose they yeah. yeah it's not like they're charging around trying to grab minnows or anything but either <laughs> right. way all of a sudden even though it's not feeding time during the day these fish that had their little fins up over their eyes for no good reason at all according to me start flying around spinning circles and when they're really active they'll literally jump out of the water just for the fun of it well if 
you want to catch a fish, that's the time to go, plain and simple. So do you have a goldfish pond because your wife wants a goldfish pond, or do you have a goldfish pond to help you fish musky? That's how it started was because my wife wanted, actually my son, and then my wife fell in love with the fish, and then we, I've been carting these fish around ever since. But <laughs> so it worked out good for everybody. Yeah. In reality, though, very seriously, I like it. Right. I, I like having just just because of that. Yeah. And and I got to tell you a quick story. One time I had uh, friends of my dad's that we hunt with down in hey, Iowa. Hey, Maina, by the way, it doesn't have to be quick. Oh, yeah, we oh that's <laughs> right. Unless you want to get out of here. Yeah. We have well, yeah. let me lean back. Yes. <laughs> we have beer we got a beer. Yeah. Reach here. <laughs> Although I have a reputation for drinking on air with Pete, so I'm trying to mellow that out lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. I didn't see the hand go. Oh, my God. There oh, there, the oh, there's a chair malfunction. I, I think I may need to uh, reorganize with a different chair after that last <laughs> lean. Okay. Well, there my, is a five-gallon bucket yeah, over there. Yeah, just go get a bucket. Yeah. yeah. That'll be a nice yeah. addition. So well, while you're doing that, we're just – Pete will can just I, keep, yeah, keep Can going. I talk while Absol- he's gone? Absolutely. I have a five-gallon bucket. Do you mind listening to a story while he goes yep. and yeah, gets a bucket? Yeah, he, he's fine. He'll, he's he'll good. All right. All right, I can't believe he broke my chair. I'm kind of sad about that. Look at the chicken talking about little, it's got her wings up over her eyes crying. This is perfect. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway uh, I got these guys up, and I can only fish with them one day, and my dad text wants me to get them out and catch a bunch of fish. Horrible cold front shows up. And it look at the, and of course the wind's blowing. And every, oh, oh, that's <laughs> a favorite chicken. Sorry to have you interrupt the situation there with it. Oh, look at him. You two are going to be. Now, don't be sneaking off with that in your pocket. <laughs> We're just working on our relationship. Me. Go ahead. I yeah. didn't mean to interrupt. Actually, but anyway, yeah, I'm, so I've got this chore. i got these buddies from Iowa, and we want them to catch a lot of fish. And I'm bummed out. You know, you do what every angler does. You make your coffee in the morning, and I look, and I go, oh, man, see the weather, see the forecast. Bummed out. East wind, too, of course. But apparently there's no rules. All of a sudden, I cheer up. I'm walking around with my coffee, and I look down at the fish pond, and the fish don't have their little fins over the eyes on the bottom. They're spinning around in circles like they're happy as heck. They don't know it's a cold front, apparently. Yep. And I cheer up a little bit, and I looked at the forecast again. Forecast still looked horrible, but nobody told the fish. I, yep. It was one of the greatest. Yep. We went out and we caught crappies. We caught walleyes. We caught bass. We caught northern pike. I think the only thing we didn't catch that day was a muskie, but we caught a lot of everything. That's awesome. It's like it's it, – it, are they coy? Or like, I what? can't take you seriously with that chicken. I'm, in sorry. Your I'm sorry. I forget. <laughs> this is just hard not to carry a chicken. I know. But it's please hold on to her. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Okay. But the, is it a koi pond? Like it? Uh, there's a little everything. Uh, chibunkins, koi. Yeah, there's. You remember chibunkins? Remember when we were kids? Yeah. We used to be in the tropical fish, goldfish and stuff, and fantail goldfish, we're, all this. We were passionate yeah. aquarium Chibunkins. Holders. Yeah, I forgot about chibunkins. But we never thought They're to cute. use it for our fishing, but it never seemed to matter with bullheads. They seemed to bite 24 They seven, really so, did. Yeah. They weren't we, affected by cold fronts at all. <laughs> the, but what that reminds me of is that, so Van Dam, I've done a lot of shoots with Van Dam. I used to work for Bass Pro Shops, of course, as you oh, know. Yeah. And way back early in the day, I did a shoot with him on Lake Fork. I think it was Lake Fork. And we did, you know, you're supposed to get tips and everything. Okay, let's do a tip on cold fronts. What, let's how do, do you, a tip. You know, tips, tips, tips. And it was <laughs> so, it's like, okay, Kevin, like, I, I, I remember just asking him off camera. It's like, you know, what do you do with cold fronts? How do you change up, you know, your your um, presentation and stuff? And he said, and that it, it, it dovetails perfectly with what you're saying. He said that he doesn't change anything. He, he waits until the fish tell him to change, you know. But most guys will see, oh, God, a cold front's coming up. Okay, i got to slow down to slower presentations, put more plastics on, blah, blah, blah. And he basically, uh, I'll, it just stuck with me. He's like, no, I just do exactly what I was doing before and just wait. If, if the fishing sucks, then I'll change. But I, he doesn't change it because right. the damn cold front, right. the forecast is calling for a cold front. Yeah, and, I mean, some guys get up and there's a wind out of the east and they just stay at home miserable. You know, you might be missing a good bite. Right. So. It, it is weird, like, why that stuff happens. Like, why would 
those fish, everybody thinks, okay, in a cold front, everything hunkers down, and who knows what, you know, what goes on there sometimes when it does get negative or whatever. But in that particular case that you were talking about, like, what was it? What was the overriding factor that was making those fish active, you know? Like, and that's the thing about fishing. There's so many factors. Yeah. You know, like, where do you start, you know? Yeah, and that's what's neat about it, though. You know, with all of the technology we have, we've talked about that quite a bit. I mean, it's, you know, it's literally amazing these days. seems like cheating in a way, but that's one thing that, you know, is never going to change in my mind. They're, you know, those, it's up to them. I mean, at the end of the day, they're the ones that got to make, make up their mind to eat and what right. they're in the mood for and how they're in the mood for it. And, and that part at least is cool that it's, you know. So yeah. Have you ever compared it to one of those um, BS sort of um, fishing calendars that show you when the peak bite times are during the day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, do, I, I, I check everything. And, and, uh, are and they relatable? I mean, you know, you see those all over the place and you wonder if it's just, you know, a way to... Well, I can say this. It's the same thing with the moon moon times or anything. If you've got a lot of barometric pressure changes going on during the day, it generally means nothing. Up or I, down I, doesn't. Yeah, uh, the barometric pressure and weather trump uh, those those charts and moon rises right. and all that stuff. So it's all where you put it in and, your. And right. again, like uh, you know, he was saying about Kevin. There's there's absolutely no rules. The worst thing you can do to yourself as a fisherman is decide that. You know how to react when a cold front's going on or a hot front's going on or whatever's going on. You do have to let the fish tell you that is the difference between success and not success. Day-to-day patterning is the single most important thing in adaptability. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, Just get out there and fish. You learn something every time, You right? can't catch them on the couch or in the garage here, but... Yeah. I, I, there's no way I'm going on the ice again. No, I hear, I hear you. Well, let's get back to... Okay, so... You're 18, you're 19, you're guiding. At what point, go through what happened when you decided to become full, well, you're already a full-time guide, correct? So technically, well, not technically, you were a professional fisherman. When did things really change for you as far as like television, sponsors, oh, like go yeah. through that, that yeah. transition? Well, that's that's real interesting. Uh, a lot of a lot of people have asked me about that, and did you have a plan? And of course, how were you able to do all of that? Uh, one thing I would say that I tell people, because young people ask me quite a bit, how yep. can I do what yep. you do? Well, you gotta you gotta work real hard and be bro- broke a lot at first. Mm-hmm. I uh, I bartended, I trawled concrete, I pounded nails. You name. Well, I did a lot of things. These chickens make some things that I actually shoveled uh for money yeah, before that's fun, right? yeah that makes fishing seem a uh, way more yeah. fun. <laughs> but anyway very seriously <laughs> you know you just you know you 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 work and work and work and and get started uh and just keep at it and i didn't have a plan i absolutely can say i never really had a plan other than the passion was there i knew i had to fish by the way i was gonna go to college <laughs> they had talked me into it you know really? these these like advisors that yes, yeah, right, yeah. Right. you know they say well i just i just heard you advising your son to go to college so it seems like uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's full circle right yeah but the, the other part is the industry was so different back then i mean now it's like there's so many different companies um pushing so many products like back in the day um especially for musky was that you know no. was it hard to find sponsors I didn't. I, I didn't even think about that. That 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 came as a as an after effect. I was more more concerned about making money guiding and, and looking at other ways. And and I did. I was real successful guiding. I I built the business up real early. I got to the point where you know, fortunately, as a young guy, I was able to do it, doing doubles. And I literally had enough business. If I was you know five different guys, I could have been busy every day. So right. I, I was able to do that. And then. Uh, Something, it's interesting because I initially said I would never do it, but then I got into the lure business. Uh, And that's something that starts to expand things for you as far as notoriety and stuff. And I can't even tell you exactly when the guiding thing, uh, you know, I was doing real well on getting notoriety for that. Oh, and then I did uh, Muskies Incorporated. Uh, that group that I've been a, I'm still a life member of that, but I did, uh, they, they have catch and release contests there, and I got into that for a little while, and I was, 
into trying to catch as many muskies as I could and registering them and that, and I did really good in that. I won that thing like five years in a row. And that was Muskies, Inc. Right? Muskies Incorporated. Right. Yeah. Yep. And every yeah. one of these just kind of your name's starting to get more recognized and people are starting to see you, but um, it was it, gradual. The tackle yeah. business is kind of what sort of helped you sort of yeah kick off the whole thing huh? yeah and that actually once that grew then then i also started to get international notoriety because of that the lure started getting overseas overseas yeah like the big muskies like your or excuse me uh pike like yeah. the european pike right yeah 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 so there was a lot of that and then uh, gradually too there was uh there was seminars people actually seemed to want to hear what i had to say about fishing and then they got to the point where they actually paid me, which I thought was nice. That's beautiful. Yeah. And yep. Uh, unfortunately, we can't pay you for any of this, yes. but we really appreciate you doing this. We do appreciate <laughs> it. We, we, we wouldn't be willing to but drink But we this. understand that this is very special. <laughs> <laughs> we would be willing to drink some of your beer as payment, so we can work on that later. Uh, but, yeah, there you but go. But one, one good thing about being a musky guy is there's a lot of mystery surrounding the fish. It's kind of an enigma to a lot of That's people. That's true. And they're intimidated yeah. by the idea of fishing musky. So they're always looking for any tidbit of information. So if you can go to a seminar and get it from some guy who's spent uh, a ridiculous amount of time on the water fishing musky, that's a pretty valuable thing. You can distill a lot of information down and save people a lot of time on the water, I'm sure. Oh, that's absolutely true. I, uh, I, I would certainly agree with that. And uh, writing, uh, of course, things have changed a lot these days with video and Internet and all of that. But uh, I, I did a tremendous amount of writing. I couldn't believe Somebody actually wanted me to write an article the first time that happened too. No, and like, I, and wow. I've I've said this to Wagner. I I, I think you're a tr uh, tremendous writer. I I love your your writing. You, right. You've got a great sense of humor, you know. And you and just even when we're texting each other, you know, like <laughs> you just you, it's no, just really it's, you, you've got a you, great writing style. I yeah, love it. I, I'll plug the book. A musky suck. Right, and the second book was Muskies Still Suck, Still and suck, I'm in yeah. that book. Right, which I haven't yeah. read yet, but I've only read the first one, but it is like one funny story after the next because it really is the, the basis of the book is not to, to brag about what a great muskie fisherman you were. It's, no. it's moreover to go over every possible thing that can go wrong or every part of the torturous process of being so passionate about muskie that the rest of your life suffers for it. And, exactly. you know, it, to be honest with you, that's kind of what we're trying to do with another fishing show in the sense of like you're but 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 you're completely on it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right. yeah, you're, right. it's it's you're you're sweeping away it. Like, let's be honest. There's a lot of shit in fishing. You know, I yeah. love this sport. Mm. I love the sport of fishing. I, I you know, but but there's a lot of you know, with the marketing of things and whatnot, there's a lot of BS. And what I've always admired about you, Pete, is you like to cut through shit of stuff. You know, and just I you, do. You, you yeah. know what I mean? And and you you have a, in fact, we actually named one of our videos. I know I named this video that we did because of your what, what we got a chicken on the loose again. Huh, yeah. I named one of our videos. It's completely inspired by your first book. It, it, it was I did a video and it was a really tough day of fishing for smallmouth bass. And I named the videos small the video smallmouth bass suck. <laughs> and I thought I to myself, it, yeah. I named it, and I'm like, I named that. That's d d directly result of Pete's book, <laughs> yeah, you know. Absolutely. But but, I, but and ironically, it was the fisherman who sucked in that case, where Pete didn't have that situation. Well, either. right, it was it, that's true. But my point <laughs> is this: is that what, what I've always admired about you, and I just I like that you're real. You know what I mean? And I guess that's what we're trying to do with another fishing show. We're trying to, you know, sweep away the 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 um the smoke and mirrors right. of this and just get down and 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 do a podcast in a yeah. garage. Right. I mean, that's yeah. what we're I mean, the jerks you see on camera are the same jerks you'll see if you meet us in person. That's right. There's no that's difference. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But but yeah. I I seriously, that's that's what I I really dig about what what you do and um and, you know, we've talked about this on the boat like countless hours. I mean, I've spent a ridiculous amount of hours I'm sorry, with Pete. Mena <laughs> sorry, in a to. boat. <laughs> and and we've talked about a lot of this kind of stuff. But um, it's exciting. I don't know. It's exciting just to be here. We, we got three. We, Wagner has set up an amazing podcast uh, uh, situation here. We got three yes. mic stands. We got mics. And we're I mobile. Mean, we're going to take this thing on the boat. I mean, this is about as fancy as we get at another fishing show. This so, will definitely not work nice. in my boat. And by the way, man, you're the first guest 
yeah. of the oh. AFS podcast. Hey, hey. talk so about one more I'm career benchmark. <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> absolutely. At least we didn't make you travel. I guess that's you have that going for you. So, yeah. so I guess this kind of this kind of segues very nice into how in the heck we got to know each other. So sure. I started yeah. working at Bass Pro, um, and you were sponsored by Bass Pro Shops. That was I worked there from 2000 to 2004, and that's where I wow. knew of you before that. You know, because I was a fisherman. I was a fisherman every before you know before I was a video guy. You know. Some people think that it's kind of funny. I got this buddy that thought I was a videographer first and then yeah, got into fishing. He's, really? a, he's yeah. a videographer under protest. Yes. He yeah, kind of. Life. That's, that's true. Especially he when he's a lot of my Especially my when rants. he's filming Musk. Wagner has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. I've been... I, that's I've enjoyed a lot of the shoots, too. But sometimes it's just like, you know, as a fisher... Here's the thing. I'd rather be doing that than be in a cubicle somewhere so it, it's kind of this right. love hate thing that can happen when you're shooting fishing and you're a fisherman yourself it's a trade-off but so anyway i got to know pete a little bit at first um at bass pro shops just more actually i don't think we ever actually did a shoot until the next bite when i was doing the first like two seasons of the next bite that's when i think we f no. is that did we do something I think, bass it was, pro shops? I think it was bass pro shops outdoor world on lake st Clair. okay with okay. keith okay so maybe that's why you were thinking next bite but it was a bass pro shop was it okay yeah. it was an outdoor world shoot okay yeah. that was the first time yeah that we met and we had been to lake st Clair since that point too oh, yeah. quite often because it's a hell of a musky fishery but that's how I got to know this guy. And, you know, when, how long was a typical like day when we would go out shooting? Well, the great thing about you is that you're not a morning person. So I really, really yeah, appreciated beautiful. that. <laughs> that's beautiful. That when we did start. And to set the scene, when you guys are doing a next bite, it's just the two of you that are going out in the boat? It, he would no. have a guest with him. And then I would be the, okay. I was the camera guy. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this was typically. Bass Pro. This was Bass Pro. One Any of them. There'd usually be, usually we'd have three anglers and Greg. Right, because you want to have something to bounce stuff off of. And now I'm finding out more and more with these things he's telling you that Greg actually didn't want to be filming any of yeah, it. No, he, he wanted just wanted to, to fish. No, no. He would go, no, no. Uh, go well, to his hotel room and As far as cry. having to yeah. work, yeah. having to have a job, it was a pretty <laughs> ideal job for me. <laughs> he loved it. But, it killed him no, not to be fishing, though. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it wasn't as hard as, like, some people go, how did you do it and not, you know, and not uh, and not fish? And I was like, well, it would. it, it was pretty gratifying to be able to catch capture i've told you this you know to capture a really kick-ass fish catching sequence right, you right. know that was really really Did gratifying get, was it a musky hitting the lure underwater you got or was that a uh we got a few of those like, oh, yeah. to the boat you know the boats uh figure eights and stuff right. and i remember one in particular on on leech lake in november we got yeah. a pretty cool pretty cool uh fish coming up you know, and, and coming up on it, like rolling on it like they do in November, a little, yeah, cold, you know, they yeah. just, you know. But can you imagine the tables turn, Pete, if you were out on a boat for, you know, 12 or 14 hours watching somebody fish where you held a camera? I mean, I don't think explode. I could do that. No, no. You, you're not built to no. do that. I, uh, the, how, I how I got through it is I, I just thought to myself, it's well, my job. I could, yeah, it's my job yeah. and it's, and it's way better than a damn cubicle, man, right. or edit. That's yeah. the thing about editing. I mean. Uh, you know, I've said this too. I mean, I, I just don't like to be in a in a confined space looking at a computer or in a cubicle. Oh, and it's torture. So it was, you know, it, it, I, I guess how we got off on this thing is like I was going to ask, like, how long was a typical day, like the musky filming day, though? It was like oh, I was into this cubicle. He's this cubicle is not. <laughs> I can't folks, stand cubicles, don't man. Don't put him in a no. cubicle. Do not put me I, in a, <laughs> I can't stand. I need to be danger. out in the open, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I go crazy, dude. That's why editing will, you know, I just want to bang my head against the wall a lot of times. Yeah, you don't even want to give him a call. Even his texts are tense if he's editing. Yeah, know? yeah. Right. No, I'm I'm a, I what I'm learning is that I'm kind of soul Pete. Really? Kind of? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you say kind of? He, yeah. did. he prefaced no, that, huh? Yeah, no. I yeah. No, I you know, I, I, I understand I have those tendencies. I do understand that. <laughs> I do I'm coming to terms with this. It's gonna turn into a therapist. Session. Yeah, no, let's get back <laughs> do you to want, Pete. Do you want to sit on the bucket? Oh, hours. Yeah, we're we're, we're talking hours. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So Water? I mean yeah. we we would basically go until and this is in the summertime, until the sun went down. Right. And honestly, oh, yeah. in the in video production, I think that's like time and a half or like it's you you get overtime 
that don't work that way in the outdoor world, dude. No. You're, you're, you just got, you're out there and you shut up, you put that camera on your shoulder and you roll. You out there till you get the shoot done. Yeah. Whatever that yeah. involves. But I love, you know, I love fishing. I love being out on the water so much that it, I was like, okay, well, you know, better, I yeah. bitched and complained. You learn a lot to, to oh, Wagner yeah. sometimes. He didn't bitch that much. No, no. But have you ever had those magical shoots where you're just like out there for three hours and you're like, we have everything we need and it's all gravy from here on out? Yeah, we've had a few, but it's real rare in muskies. Yeah, Usually yeah. you're grinding right. it out. I wish I had a nickel for every time you're getting down to the wire and, you know, you need one more fish or, you know, yeah. and then you pull it out. But once in a blue moon, probably the... That the the absolute best was probably St. Clair yes. with Rick Emmett yeah. and and Brian Tram. Because yeah. we probably only actually did with all of the tips and everything else that we had to get in in order to complete a show, there was probably only about five hours of actually fishing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we got like seven Big ones. Jeez. I mean, one was a super giant. I know. Yeah, you know? that was, and that was on, um, that was on like a Medusa or something. What, 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 no, it was on that. It was uh, a Red October. I got Red the October, biggest, which is yeah. a tube. If it, yeah. you guys in the, if if you don't musky fish, a, a Red October tube is a giant. It's a giant tube. In fact, Wagner, there's a giant tube over there. He's got laying on. It's like there probably is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, there's junk it, everywhere. You got to be able to find a tube. It's a. It's right. You see it. Yes, oh, that one right there. That's a rather small that's one. That's a small one, but I want to, if you can hand that to me, Pete, I want to try this for some Mississippi smallmouth up my neck of the woods. I, I'm wondering if they might hit it because I fish tubes almost exclusively. I mean, when I'm fishing slower. That's almost the exact if, tube you fish. <laughs> I mean, a little smaller, but that Only 100 times bigger. But, Pumpkin. But, yeah, so that's that's the funny thing, like – in bass fishing, tubes are, I mean, especially in smallmouth bass fishing, tubes are super effective and they're effective in musky fishing as well. So, and I was going to ask you, so that Lake St. We'll just set this right here. Careful okay. now. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh, 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 this is, yeah. So that Lake St. Clair trip, do you remember is, so there's a, there's a fisherman at Lake St. Clair is kind of notorious. Is musky Jesus still over there? <laughs> <laughs> Do you he, know if he's still there? He may still be roaming around. This I, guy, and I don't know the the gentleman. I'm just I just remember that there was a guy, a musky fisherman there that called himself Musky Jesus Wagner. Was he obnoxious? I, I or was he funny as Musky Jesus? Maina probably has to be politically correct here. Right. I don't necessarily know that I have to, but I would say that anybody calling themselves Musky Jesus right. is really um I'm not gonna say it. No, maybe narcissistic. <laughs> maybe uh, yes, yes. Maybe we could say. It. you could be. Called. How <laughs> do you even? How does that even happen? Right. That you're going to be known. <laughs> Did he have T-shirts and hats? Uh, I think just, so, dude. I don't know. Uh, I yeah. like sticker. Is that not ridiculous? It's catchy. I'll give him that. But that's a lot of pressure, you know. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah, sure. He's the musky <laughs> messiah. Right. I, I mean, mean, you're telling yourself. You're telling yeah. people out there that you're the messiah of musky. Right. You can't come back without a fish. Yes, you no, know, no, no, no. That's Jesus. You just, you just walk on water back to your cabin, right? Yes. <laughs> this is <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't left them to this day. <laughs> so them. what? So we did we did a um, our first another fishing show video shoot with with Mena uh, back in when was that? Was that Jan when was that January? Was that January? February? February? Was it February? I think it was February. February. I don't February remember. Now? I was too drunk. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I don't so I so we got so Wagner and I we have a pretty amazing um, a sturgeon uh, lake sturgeon fishery near us on the Saint Croix River and I know that here's the thing Here everybody knows Mena as the the musky uh, legendary musky angler but the fact of the matter is you're a multi species guy too I mean you love to catch all, right. all kinds yeah. of you know you have to be and we've done we we did a um, we did a white sturgeon shoot one time on the Snake yeah, River, right. which is yeah. really awesome. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, it's I'm hearing all this stuff going on about being able to ice fish for Lake Sturgeon near us on the Saint Croix River, and they're getting they seem to be getting bigger and bigger. So I'm like, how cool would it be? Maine is not that far. If we all gathered together at the Saint Croix River and we did a we did a sturgeon video, you yeah. know, ice fishing video. And don't wouldn't you say that ice fishing for Lake Sturgeon is pretty unique? Mana, 
Like that's oh like, yeah. yeah. Really so yeah. I thought it would be a, a it's yeah. It's hard to find them grouped up. It's just not a common thing, I think, to find sturgeon in those numbers um, in a specific area. Right. You know, right. It's a pretty amazing place. I mean, Rainy River's amazing, but can you right. can you ice fish for sturgeon on the Rainy River? Uh, the Rainy River's a little more. I haven't heard about it. It's just a lot of current up there. Well, well now it's completely current. open. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, so my for some reason, the St. Croix it, it's almost in the metro of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and they they call it some of the best ice in the metro. Which who knows if that's true or not? But I've heard that a couple of times already. So yeah. So we decided to to uh, get or, or get organized, work with so Northwoods Angling, who um, they've got a growing YouTube channel. I thought it would be great. Uh, Pete Mana here. He's got a growing YouTube channel. We're trying to. We want to collaborate. We're, we're collaborating, YouTubing. Yes, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. And I thought, what better place to do it than on you know, it's the St. Croix River what for could, sturgeon? What could go wrong? Well, you, what, what? Yeah, what, well. what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so we all gather, and then the other thing too. So Alex Perrick, who has I don't know, I think he's maybe three hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube now. Yeah, he's maybe um, thirty pounds and three. He's got 000. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's about right. And uh, so Northwoods has, has basically been working with him, um, and so it just happened that he was going to be on that shoot as well. So we're like, oh, this is awesome. You know, what an opportunity. It's like a summit. A yeah, it's yeah. like a summit. And maybe Alex can, like, promote all our channels. We had these grandiose, at least I did in my head, had, we had these grandiose ideas that Alex Perrick is going to promote five channels or whatever it is, right. you know. And we're all, all our subscribers are just going to shoot through the roof. The internet would crash the next day. You yeah. Know? Unfortunately, the, the sturgeon didn't feel like really cooperating that much but not a lot no it but was it, but it, it was, was fun yeah and by it the way very Pete, um, greg was uh, complaining about the fact that um we didn't even get a mention in alex video when he put it out and immediately the next morning i get a message from alex saying hey sorry about that guy it's like greg he oh, seems right? somewhat <laughs> devastated that he didn't get a piece of the pie but then alex uh, offered to come fish with us in may which was really nice of him he, yeah, went, he sure. was talking about coming down in may so we're still trying to make that happen but i thought it was funny that i'm sure he wasn't watching our podcast but somebody was watching it that made sure alex saw it and then he was nice enough to what if he's actually a, a frequent listener of our podcast what, what if he always, oh, you know? I would, he probably can't <laughs> wait for this to get out i would imagine he's sitting around somewhere waiting. And he's a sweet kid. And talk about living the life. I mean, he quit college because he really he was going to school. I like, love that. Oh, to, <laughs> I should have. But he quit, I'm another quitter. He was so going I gotta, to school, I think, to be an engineer. And he did the numbers, and he's like, you know what? I can make more money on YouTube than I ever could in the career I'm heading into. And he's just, you know, bouncing around the world now, fishing for whatever. I mean, talk yeah, he's about, like he was in Thailand. And if you think yeah, about the path I you took, saw me, that. like the amount of work you went through to get from point A to point B in the fishing world, you know, just to get a career going. He literally had a friend in high school that was like, hey, I'm making YouTube fishing videos. You should try it out, too. And his friend's got like a million subscribers, right? He's a pro John B. He's he John B. is like yeah. very well known a in the fishing. Alex YouTube. didn't even make his own YouTube. What is it? May I digress for just no, a not at how all. Did I, oh, how, I mean, yes. How did I get in the middle? I feel like a, <laughs> you guys only got to look one direction. <laughs> well, hey, my, yeah, your head's on a my swivel. My neck's getting sore. And how did I get the bad chair? I see what you got. You're trying to make me look drunk on every shoot. I'm golden over here, man. <laughs> so, I'm loving and, life. And we talked a little bit about this on the last one. So the shoot eventually involved me. And I kind of explained this last time that I realized that I probably wasn't even going to get a swipe at a fish because I was hoping you were going to get a fish, which you did, but not the size we were looking for. And then um, I was just kind of I was just having a good time being in the ice house, obviously. <laughs> so um, and I, I totally forgot about the hot 100. That's what did me in. fireball fireball, fireball? whatever. Same okay. difference. Yeah. So that came swiping around twice. And then um, and I was telling Greg, you know, boy, when the camera comes on, like Pete is like a real pro, because if there's one thing that we're not as professionals at being on camera, we're, you know, whatever, <laughs> we're manageable. But I was like, when the camera came on, I'm like, it, it's the Pete that I see on TV. Like, he's just like. He's on, he's interesting, he's involving everybody. So at the end of the night, Greg is like, uh, hey, <laughs> he called hey. me out in my camping chair. And hey. I'm, at this point, I'm slumped down in my camping chair, you know, just ready for the night to end. It's like midnight or 1 a.m. He's like, you want to do a close here, Pete? You know, and I was just like, are you talking to me about, like, you want me to do something on camera, you know? So then I had to stand up, and then that turned into the best part of the video, 
was me unable to close out the evening because uh, my speech was impaired by uh yeah i i mean i would like to say nervousness (laughs) yeah no yeah no you were impaired man you were definitely impaired i just i look at the video we've talked about this before i looked at the video it was awesome that pete you caught your first you know sturgeon ice sturgeon right but i looked at it okay i go look i mean this guy cannot do the conclusion here so i had to that's what oh, i was perfect that's i knew what it, i, used I knew it the, was coming and then uh, when he put it up to you and you left something on facebook i don't remember what it was like uh looks like ob got through under the bus or something yeah you comment <laughs> what did, you had a yeah, comment about a comment. smoking tires that made me laugh my skid, ass off. skid marks yeah skid marks. Skid and at that point i hadn't watched it but greg had sent me a text like hey um i'm gonna be throwing you completely under the bus for this shoot and i was just like all right whatever just go for it i guess you know so uh <laughs> yeah he just well, took I, it and yeah. he just ran with it well, so. I, I had I listen as a professional video guy. I had to I had to see what was in front of me and go. This is the best course of action yeah. here. Just to throw yeah. my old buddy. And by the way, I, under I the went bus. out the following uh, Wednesday and got four sturgeon, including like a forty-five inch or so. I redeemed myself as a sober yeah. fisherman. Well, oh, I, for, nice. You, yeah. Unfortunately, Maina wasn't there. No, you know what I mean. I wasn't. <laughs> well, so what it, do you what do you think of that that fishery, Pete? there like what do you think of the potential of that thing like what what's what's just your thoughts on what's going on over there are you talking sturgeon or just i'm, in I'm just in general like in general you, it's amazing i mean you know from what i understand about it a little bit now i i haven't spent much time on it there was a time period where it kind of got talked about for muskies and of course i had to run down there and fish it right i never I never. It, it's just a little too far away for me to to get real serious about it. So I never got it super dialed in. Caught a few fish, nothing real big. Got real intrigued for a while, and just the busyness of life got me away from it. But uh, the fishery is so diverse. I mean, you know, I was. I, I can't even remember all the different species they were talking about when we were out there. I mean, it's it's unbelievable between the catfish and sturgeon and everything else that's in there i mean it's just a tremendous fishery yeah. and it's big i mean there's a lot of water there right and it's deep and cold and that far south and then within a city limit like that but it's protected it's just an amazing combination i've always been scared to fish it i've always been wanting to and finally we worked up the courage but um we got out there the first time in november in open water that was sturgeon fishing and got what three big sturgeon that was right. unbelievable mm-hmm. i mean i was just like that's okay. when we first kind of like wow and it kind of saved my ice fishing season because i was i've always been a guy that sort of you know i protest on my ice fishing but <laughs> we have a chicken we, we've got we have a crowd the, the actually chickens have decided to come back around yeah we actually have a I gallery love, i love this one he's, he's got like boots I'm scared. Yeah. Like, like, you know, I'm scared I mean? to like, pick him up because he looks like he has talons. Oh, no, they're friendly. What do you call that? Like the 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 feathers on. Yeah, the, I on don't. The... I you know I should know what the the type of chicken is called. I I've heard it a few times, but yeah, they got they got little feathery boots, which has been really handy this winter. So well, yeah, for know. sure. They're like yeah, they're built for for winter living. I think yeah. Pete, if you could grab one of those chickens, I think maybe we conclude part one of this podcast if but you i could think just go get some of that uh cracked corn or something and hold your hand yeah. out they'll come right to you we really appreciate first of all pete i want to thank you for doing this we're going to go into part two after this so okay you you gotta you gotta stick tight and and watch the second part of this podcast but okay. yeah. i want to thank you for doing this pete i want to encourage people to subscribe to oh, pete yeah. mana professional musky angler is your channel correct yes, Pete. subscribe yes, to pete's channel uh subscribe to our channel if you haven't already like the video share the video let's get the word out um hey man brother let's go to part two